I'm Russell Miller, Chair of the Voice and Opera Department at Eastman. On behalf of Dean J. Morassi, it is again my honor to welcome soprano Renee Fleming back to the Kilburn Hall stage for a master class on this, her third visit as Eastman's first distinguished visiting artist. You all know about her amazing worldwide career in opera, concert, and recital, including four Grammy Awards, the National Medal of Arts, other international honors and honorary doctorates from prestigious schools, of course, including Eastman the University of Rochester. This Saturday, November 12th in Kodak Hall and Monday, November 14th at Lincoln Center in New York, the Eastman Philharmonia under Neil Verone will present the world premiere performances of Letters from Georgia, a new song cycle by Pulitzer Prize winning Eastman alumnus, composer Kevin Putz, written specifically for Ms. Fleming, inspired by letters written by artist Georgia O'Keeffe. The concert also includes Ravel's Rhapsody Espanol and Prokofiev's Symphony No. 5. We are all incredibly excited to hear this concert on Saturday. Once again, it is a privilege to watch Ms. Fleming work with four voice students, both undergraduate and graduate, selected by the voice and opera faculty. It's very appropriate, given the concert this weekend, that two of these pieces are by contemporary American composers. I knew Renee's own voice teachers at Eastman and Juilliard, including, of course, our own Patricia Alexander. And if you've been to Renee's previous classes, you have seen what an immediate impact she has, not only artistically, but vocally as well, and her gracious way of delivering her great information and interpretive ideas. Vocal coaches like me live to see young singers inspired by experiences like these. Let me thank Dr. Jonathan Retzloff for helping to organize the Masterclass program, and of course, Keith Elder and the Concert Office staff for all they do for us. I have the unenviable task of keeping us on schedule. So we'll begin once again, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Renee Fleming. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much. Hey. So we're starting with Ellen and Matthew, and I've asked uh, Ellen, and I hope all singers will introduce themselves and their work and uh, tell us a little bit about the piece. Now this first selection, I, I will say, um, uh, Tony Griffey, Anthony Griffey, is actually in Houston now uh, premiering It's a Wonderful Life, which is a, a brand new opera premiere by this same composer, by Jay Keggy. Okay, come on.
Wow, so beautiful. My goodness. And, and both of you, uh, both of you really brought this to life. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, now, I, I want to talk about the piano lid because I never sing and recital with the piano open. But, you know, that's my preference. And it's because what I find is standing right here, the piano uh, it makes me feel pressured to sing more. And, um, and I want to stay in contact with the piano. So another alternative is to walk far down stage. But then we lose that contact. So I always, in fact, my, my pianist that I tour with uh, most often in Europe has had his own stick made. <laughs> that, and, and it's very clever because it's, it, it looks like the rest of this. And he usually puts it in before I arrive, hoping that I won't notice. But what it is, instead of the small stick, it's, it's something in between, you know, it's like another three inches and it really does make a big difference. But open is tough, it's, it's hard, like I had trouble. In fact, I'm gonna suggest that we put the lid down because where I'm sitting, it's so much piano. And especially this piece, which has enormous range, it's beautiful, the playing. But I felt like I wanted you to feel, are you aware of it? A little bit. A little bit. But that's what I'm saying. Are you aware of how full the piano is? Or does that make you feel supported? I guess it kind of depends. In this context, it made me feel a little bit more supported. But mm -hmm. I guess it also just depends on the context. Right, right. It depends on how nervous you are, et cetera. OK, all right. So let's just put it down for the purposes of today, because we're, we're doing so much work with uh, singers. Um, and and, and I'm, I only mention this because you really have total control. Those of you who are performing, you know, don't, don't be afraid to say, gosh, you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm pushing, you know, because I feel that the piano is so present in my ear. So it's not even a, it's not a balance issue at all. So, um, so I, I actually, you sing this really beautifully. I mean, I, I would love to see, um, your, your diction is phenomenal, right? So it's excellent. Uh, but I would love to sort of have a sense of a more of a speech quality to it, sort of like you're talking, you're saying this, you're telling this story, and you're making it up. You're making it up for the first time. You know, everything should sound spontaneous, if possible. Um, and be more sort of conversational. And I also love the fact, Jake is so good, uh, at a, at, he's such an expressive composer, so you have joy, you have, you, and I feel like when you sing that word, you're singing it. And it, rather than just expressing it, because it can be different each time, you know. Um, let's start again. And these are really, you, you both sound phenomenal, so these are small things that, that can just kind of bring, uh, you know, right now it's, it's an excellent performance, and it could be magical. It could be the thing that where you think, oh, I have goosebumps, you know, that's so great. Okay, so, so the stunning silence. You, so all this alliteration, too, with the S's. So if you could start... Um, is if you're, this is unfolding, this experience. Okay. Try, try one more time. And I would love to see you a little bit more in your body, because you're quite, it's, you're just quite singing, you know, you, you're, it's all great, but I want to feel that the whole thing is connected okay. to the floor. Don't be afraid to move around a little bit to be more physically expressive, okay? Okay, so one word, start again, start again. So don't lean forward. So for you, expression is very often doing this. You know, instead, stand up straight and feel it this way so that you're always open to the audience, okay. right, and not closing yourself off. One more time. Just right on it, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're going to look at one other thing. So, so your idea of, of, of sort of being that, giving it that expression is to simply step forward. 
But you can also remember, you're, you're in nature, you know, you're really experiencing in this, as opposed to just singing straight out. I would love to see you kind of in your mind's eye having this experience, you know, acting this experience. Because uh, it's, it's, it's beautifully written, but then, you know, I, 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 I want to see you thinking, I want to see you seeing. You know, I want to imagine that, you know, there it is. And look at the forest. And oh my gosh, there's some moss over there, you know. So we, we want to experience this with you as you're experiencing it. Every song that you sing tells a story. And sometimes it's an interior story. And sometimes it's an exterior story that where you're including the audience in what you're saying. And this one is really this exploration and you're including the audience. You know what I mean? So try with that. Now, let me talk to you briefly about support which because you know your jaw shakes a little bit and I think it's because you're not quite you, you're not quite having the the sort of strength and the power coming from someplace else so it ends up being here what um, what's your sense of tell me a little bit about how you support um, I try to think up and out mm -hmm. also from mm -hmm. great okay so what I'm missing is the actual breath I'm missing that when you take the breath let me show me nice big breath yeah, you're not, you haven't been doing that. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? You know, it's like I had the right thing in mind, but then you have to sort of take this leap. Uh, so, so, and really opening up the back of your neck a little bit, right? So just no more hunching forward. You really want to stay. So keep that expansion one more time, big breath. Yeah. Now, if you maintain that, see, all my Pilates is, you know, you, it's, it, it makes a big difference. You, have, you need that strength. And you also get that connection to your body that's helpful. So start again. Because, you know, what happens is I think when you have a fuller sound, your resonance, all of that is gorgeous. And when you have a fuller sound, you don't quite have the, the, um, the strength to support it as much. Just, can you just skip over to, to uh, 41 and let's look at that. Joy alone, joy alone. Okay, so it's not so much power and pushing air, it, on the contrary, it's sort of sucking the air in. Okay. Okay. Can you give her possibly, thank you, Matthew. Uh, yeah, right on it, that's fine. Okay, so try one more thing with that. Instead of, you're, you're sort of closing this off behind your nose. Chai, chai, joy, joy. Think of a more further back in, in terms of uh, this, the, the, the um, resonance that you feel and more width. So, joy, joy, joy. Feel that. Just give that a little bit. I think you could open it up just a little bit more is what I'm saying. Okay. One more time. Okay, very good, very good, but don't take it down, you know, so, so keep it nice and high in terms of your, your resonance, and we're trying to find this common language here, so instead of joy, 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 like, like, the, like this, you know, you've got this sort of, this dome, try one more time, and let me see the breath, okay, so one more time, okay, but not, not with air, don't, don't push the air out, you suddenly, your whole chest collapsed, the opposite, the opposite. So hold, you know, really maintain this, this expansion. You want to really make sure that when this is, when this is expanded, that you maintain that expansion as long as you can. You don't uh, immediately lose that, okay? Okay, that's really nice. That's really good. Does that feel okay, though? Because, Joy, you're kind of wide open. Imagine the second one that you're not giving everything. You're not using so much. You're using a lot of air. So, allow it to bloom with resonance as opposed to with pushing air through. You know what I'm saying? Just try the second one. And also try saying, just sing jaw once. Jaw, 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 J-A-W. No, no, sorry, just the second one. Oh. Ja, the high one. Good. 
good. I like that because it sort of, I'm trying to get your voice a little bit out from this kind of, you're doing a pyramid on the top, which it, you can do it. It's working. It's just not quite as open. It's not blooming the way we would love. We'd love some bloom on that. So you have to almost play with vowels. But just play with vowels until you, you imagine that the one that you've found opens your voice up, and then you can work your way back to the vowel you're supposed to be singing. You know, I do that a lot. Um, so that's very nice. Ja, 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 long. One more time. Now, this is a long phrase, so you want this to bloom, that A. Don't hit it and then throw air through it. Hit it, allow it to bloom, and then come down. Okay, so that wasn't any more effort, right? Did you feel like her vo voice was suddenly twice as big? Did that just come out? Okay, so because it's hard for me to tell because I'm right next to her, but it, that, that seemed really, it's not that we're aiming for volume, it's that we're aiming to get the maximum color in your sound. Even though it's a song, you want this variety, you know what I mean? Uh, and you don't have to do that, you could do that pianissimo and just bloom a little bit, you, it's your choice. Uh, so let's go back. I loved your chatter of chipmunks. That was so good, really <laughs> wonderful. And fox streaks, and I understood every word, and you really made that come to life. That was so colorful. So let's go back to the beginning one more time and show me, tell me the story. Ex you know, e experience it in the moment. I saw it too. So, so the blue collar workers, you know, it's it, 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 these are being ascribed to parts of nature. So there's some humor in that. You know, so saying these are blue collar workers. I mean, that's a kind of a funny analogy. So enjoy that a little bit more. You know, you're being clever and cute. Briefcases for the winter. I mean, chipmunks filling their briefcases. I mean, these are kind of funny images. You're being very much the same and very much is sort of serious, right? Blue. So enjoy. And frankly, if you're smiling when you're singing, your sound is going to have more color in it. It's going to be brighter. Um, so very good. I felt. I feel like when you're sustaining pitches. Your vibrato wants to get a little bit rigid, so um, I want to feel still like when you take that breath, there's a connection, there's the, con the connection stays there. Uh, friendly hand, rest her friendly, that's, that's a terrible word on an E, isn't it? Yeah. Let me hear that again. Uh, a late low sun, rest her friendly, let's find the right placement for that word. So try thinking it's smaller. So you're doing friendly hand. Think of it as in a smaller place right here. Friendly hand. Make it sort of more narrow. Okay. Try that. That's a good tip for Passaggio in general. Try, try one more time. Focus it more. Try that again. Yeah. Try. 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 Try.
There you go. See, it's smaller. It's a smaller place. Yeah, and then there's not, the other one had air. It had a lot of air in the sound. Okay, try, try one more time in context. Yes, there you go. That's the right direction. So, can you, I, you, you know, you have that wonderful suspension there. I don't want you to breathe there. I want you to breathe before, you know, on the crowns of uncompromised trees. Try that. Because that should really crescendo. Well, he has, he's written it, a crescendo forte, because of what the harmonize, uh, what the piano is doing there. Can you just do um, on the crowns and take a breath after, a big breath after crowns? Okay, so let's try one more time. First of all, I want to hear the C, C, C. Now sort of use the vowel, use the diphthong to help you crescendo into that. So, because you want to, you know what's missing there is tension. The musical tension, you really want to sort of kind of dig into that so trees is sexier. That's basically, that's what we're aiming for. So, you know, because that's, that's, I think, <laughs> what Jake was trying to do there. Because you've got that fabulous uh, harmonic turn there. Could just do that. Of uncompromised trees. Of uncompromised trees. Okay, no, but yeah, you're doing it by leaning forward again. Yeah, try something else. Try something different. Try... too because that all it needs to be focused okay. it's a little bit huh one more time. that's better that's better good 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 you don't know what I'm talking about so it's just finding more ways of telling a musical story you know because you're you're singing beautifully it's all lined up and it looks you look relaxed you look natural so let's bring a lot more artistry into it and also find different ways of being expressive with your not just your voice but your body got it because you're totally on the right track it's beautiful I'm so glad I got to hear you thank, thank you, so you. Yeah, it's and beautiful job beautiful job gorgeous um, can we put this on the small stick? Yeah, I didn't mean to close it all together. Okay, Teresa. Teresa uh, is going to tell you what she's singing, and boy, I just love that we have all this interesting music today. This is great. Thank you. You can use the mic over there too if you prefer. Or you can... We are singers. Uh, good morning. My name is Teresa Parada, and this is Jeremy B. Hill, and we will be performing Touch Me from Tom Chikulo's Late Summer um, in the poetry is by Stanley Kunitz. Uh, Mr. Kunitz was about 90 years old when he wrote the poem, so the piece is really a reflection back on his life and what he's experienced, and also that longing for that uh, youthful passion that we have.
Beautiful, excellent, Teresa and Jeremy. Gosh, I love that you're all looking at this new music. This is phenomenal. Um, what made you choose this, this song in particular? I'm curious. Is it part of a cycle? Because I, I don't know it. Yeah, it's late summer. It's uh, three pieces, mm -hmm. all by different poems, uh, poets, and this is the last piece. Uh-huh. And, and so they all reflect on a sort of late in life? Yeah. So I, I ask again, what made you decide to do this? Because it's, it's a very mature poem, and you know you're having to tell this story. Yeah. And it's just really powerful, and I think Tom Chapula really said it well. Yes. The the poetry so good. I'm very impressed. Um, so, what th this, however, it's, it's hard because he's written a lot of very long phrases and uh, with a lot of text, and they go throughout your range. So, um, I think what you, the choices you've made to sort of get through it are to try and sort of sing sing everything in kind of one place. Let's just play with uh, opening up the side of sort of sense of expression, the, the forget about your breath for a second. Okay. Let's just try starting, starting again, um, just pretend you could breathe every two, two notes or something. How would you sing it? Okay. Right? So give that, a, give that a crack, just out there. Try again, so try again. So try, instead of, you're keeping everything in a very small place, right? Summer is late, Open it up, open it up instead, but not, it doesn't have to be loud, okay. right? Just try opening up the words a little bit more in terms of exactly how you place them in your mouth. Just write right on it, please. Oh, 
Much better, much better. That's much more natural. It seems more natural. And the funny thing is, um, I sang Otello with uh, a Latvian tenor, Antonienko, who's singing this repertoire, this big repertoire. And it was the, he had the freakish, most freakish breath control. Um, and so does my friend Dmitry Vorostovsky. You know, they t typically tie five phrases together where they were not even written that way. And one of the things he said to me that I thought was interesting is he said, you have to use your air. If, you, if, you, if you're trying to save your air, you're gonna get, it, you'll get tight. And then, then you have no air. So what I have found in my own singing is that I have to keep going back and forth between those two ideas of, of sort of trying to, to really feed the phrase in a, in a thoughtful way and of sort of trying to really release it. So, you know, you're constantly wrestling with these muscles. So I feel like you're definitely, I see stuff going on here, but I want to see more expansion when you take a breath. Okay. I want to see a little bit more release, a little more movement. It's all very held, okay? One more time. Summer is late, 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 my friend. Open, open, open. Right on it. Summer is late, my heart. Good. Out of the air some 40 years ago. Okay, one more time. One more time. That's good. That's very, that's much better. More. More, okay. 40. Wow, exaggerate. Let me see you just do bizarre exaggeration, you know. Ugh. So really crazy. In fact, this is the way you should all practice. You know, it, just try to release everything in the mirror and then sing it again with that same freedom, but not as exaggerated, okay? Words, blah, blah. Whatever the pitch is, okay? Exaggerate, exaggerate. Okay, so that was not exaggerated at all. That was pretty close to right, right? I mean, that, you know, that just was sort of freer. It was free. So that was really good. 40 years ago, so do, now, when I was wild, when, I'm going to help you with this phrase, okay? okay. So just, just um, words plucked out. One more time. Words plucked out of the air some 40 years ago. Oh my God, that's good. That's really good. Shoot, you weren't even thinking about it, were you? <laughs> I love it. So go on. When I was wild with love. Now, so big breath, big breath, and then... So, so you're, you're supporting, you're just, it's not quite connected. Yeah. It's not quite connected. So that time it was, uh -huh, uh -huh, when you least expect it. Try that, just that phrase, uh, when I was wild. When I was wild with love and almost in Okay, so you've got a pianissimo, sustenuto, subito, floating. Okay. <laughs> You know, it took me so long to read what you're supposed to do with that pitch, you know, uh, 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 so crazy. So I, I think he made it clear what he wants. So, and he wants it subito, and he wants a crescendo before that, right? Yes. With love and toil. The good news is that that O vowel is your friend, okay? With love and toil. So let me just hear a hootie right on that pitch. Sustain it, no vibrato, just sustain it and find the hootiest place. Ooh, wow, that's good, that's good. Um, <clears throat> uh, and now try, sorry, uh, try the phrase before that, just the vowels. Okay, but I want a super uh, contrast. Okay. So forte to float. Yeah, so you know that's beautiful, and it's exciting, and it's and it's sort of the passion that he's looking for. So I'm just pushing you all to kind of push that artistic envelope, and don't be afraid to exaggerate ever. Okay? Can you do that? When I was wild with love and now he's got a portamento. 
not too much vibrato, that's too Italianate, but a little. Okay. Okay, one more time, one more time. That was good, you just didn't own it. Okay. I need you to own it. Like I'm doing this on purpose yeah. and you are all gonna fall down, <laughs> right? Okay. It's cu called courage, it's called courage and we need lots of it to be great artists. Go ahead. Okay, so still not enough. I want you to be a total extrovert, right? You show us, show us what you have in mind. You're, you're, you're kind of doing it about 50% of the way. Okay. So first of all, that means the crescendo needs to be more, more open, more supported, more, when I was, well, I mean, what are the words? Wild, right? When I was wild, wild with love. This is, should be like crazy and Right? Yeah. You, you're just being an introvert. Okay, so super extrovert. Or I'm going to make you sing it on the floor. <clears throat> Good, 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 good. So he kills you again because he's got that, that, this goes on and on and on, and that was good. But you're, you're so busy trying to sing the phrase that you're not giving us the expression, the crazy expression. Breathe more, I want you to okay. breathe more. And this is also says horse, a whisper. So he said no breath, but then you can go scattered like, you can talk it, okay. you can talk it. Okay, so, torn, almost in two, try, try from there. Yeah. No holding. Come on. Good. Okay, so this is different. This is a little different though, already on the pressing forward. This should be, you know, yeah. so, so you've just expressed this very inmost, you know, very vulnerable feeling. And then you can stop and say, this is the problem. You know, it's a much more kind of, it is my heart that's late, right? And you're still holding. So I want you to really work on this in front of a mirror. You will see that your tongue is holding, your jaw position is holding, and I want you to just be a massive, crazy extrovert in the mirror, okay? Because you will start chewing on every word, really open up, just sing to the sky, you know. I do this stuff, by the way, you guys. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sort of making it up. This is how you get out of your way and, and own a free performance. Um, it is my heart that's late, right there. And this is pressing forward, so really open this one up. Big breath. It is my heart. Okay, this is so much better. I can't, this is really great. Really wonderful, really wonderful. I would love to see you physically a little more expressive because you're not, nothing moves, nothing moves. But I hear it now, it really sounds much better, you know, and it's more, you're, you're owning it more. Yeah, and I know you love the song, so don't be so careful. Um, can we just go skip to the, to, to the end? Uh, or uh, let's go to what makes an engine go. And also, when you're working on this, he's written so much stuff in. 
no breath, no breath, no breath. You're a kid, ignore it, you know? <laughs> you know, it's, more, it's less important that you do every little marking and more important that you find your, your version of this and your personality and your voice. So, because what he's written is sort of, it, it's kind of unrealistic sometimes. Uh, okay, so let's go that. What makes an engine go? Try on desire, try starting it with a little bit more of this direction in it. So sing it first with a sing diso. Diso. And so your crescendo, right now you you you've put it into a small place and then you're you're pushing, okay? Experiment with sort of finding more color in the sound and allowing it again to sort of bloom. Bloom rather than drive. Lead rather than drive, okay? So, so that time, that time, you just sort of changed slightly the vowel. I'm talking about a whole different way of crescendoing, because your, your crescendo now is only sort of to to add uh, breath pressure, and I'm sort of suggesting it's that. Also the breath, of course, but also sort of finding space. Okay. You're, you're sort of a little bit in its lateral position and a bit stuck. Just play with it and see what happens. Just right now, just go this. <laughs> well, see, that's, so I would love for you to really play with it, but, uh, but that was definitely more open. That was definitely more open. Okay, we've run out of time. Sorry. <laughs> Thank Bravo. you. Great. Wonderful. Super job. Super. Thank you. Okay. John. Thank you, thank you. Hello, my name is John Meyer, and with my pianist, Fermi Vigil, we will be performing Questo Amor Vergogna Mia from the opera Edgar by Puccini. This aria is in the first act of the opera, and right before um, my character Franck confronts the wild Tigrana, whom he is in love with, um, he sings about his unrequited love for her and the last section of the aria he laments. She laughs at my weeping, I at her feet with a crushed heart. But it is her alone that I dream of and desire, ah, misfortune, because I love her.
Thank you, John and Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you. So pretty and such a, you're so musical. Very musical. I love the way you shaped the phrases, the way you did some beautiful decrescendos. So I'm, I want to work with you on just, you know, one main thing, which is your tongue position and the way it's sort of too covered. And um, do me a favor. And, you know, honestly, the teachers that I talk to who are in New York who are working with professionals, this is the hardest thing to gain control of and in my case it's a lifelong effort so you know and if you see if you see this phenomenal MRI of the, my baritone colleague uh, Michael Fola on YouTube I you should all look at this I mean I've talked about it already but it shows him singing in profile and you just the tongue it looks like somebody's got a knee inside of his mouth it's huge so there's no wonder that it gets in, you know, in the way a lot and it gets us a little bit in trouble. So um, do me a favor, and here's one of the things that I do is I, I warm up, if I'm working on something and I feel that there's a little bit of tension in the back, is that I just sing the whole thing or sing bits of it with my tongue out. Uh. Can we try that? Just let, just let me hear what that sounds like, just from the beginning. So I take it this isn't the first time you've been asked to do this. <laughs> You're really good. That's where, That's great. That's excellent. <laughs> it's just like that. You know, he was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, right? <laughs> so let's try. So and imagine now, imagine all of you, and this is a very good exercise for everybody, imagine that you're singing only above your tongue. Okay, so there's not sort of, uh, there's none of that sort of low, back, down thinking. It's always, uh, think Italianate, Italianate. Now try the try the words, but still with the tongue out. No, no, it went right, went right back. Okay, so this is Donald Duck. I think it's Donald Duck. Good. Super, super, super. Okay, so because you can hear this better too, right? This is sort of projecting better. Um, so try again. See if you can maintain that because it's the problem. What's really frustrating for us is all of these things sound really great in our ear. It's just like, wow, that's a warm, beautiful, dark sound. Mm, I'm loving that. It doesn't project very well. So we have to get used to hearing something thinner and not as full or rich in our inner ear so that they get it. They get the thin, they, they get the rich and beautiful. Um, so try one more time. Questo, just thinking that. Now try singing it with, with can, do you hear what happens? Can you hear the change in the sound when, they, when you get the tension in the back? Yeah. Okay, see if you can maintain this now. No, no, go ahead and try, try. you can actually sing words now. <laughs> Good, good, good. It still wants to, it's your palate too, all right? So, so you're, you're pulling that down to create that sound. Try really thinking, so you, the tongue is working for you now, now try and really thinking, um, I'm trying to think of how we can get you to, so me, 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 try to think uh, more open. Just try thinking more Luciano Pavarotti, so he's your guy to watch, all right? So thinking a little bit more, blah, try, try that. Meh, try M-E-H. Just sing it all in M-E-H. Me, 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 wow, wow, that's good. That's really good. Do you hear the difference? Yeah. Okay. Now, may, may, uh, try to change that meh to the E vowel. So you can maintain that sense of, of everything being more open and less you know, you're pulling your palate down. Keep it nice and round. Nice, nice. That's it. That's it. That's it. You immediately, when you don't think about it, you immediately go back. Okay, try one more thing. And really, t I want to see, I feel like you're just a little bit under energized. Come on over here. Okay. 
So we're going to just sing against the piano. I just want to really get a little bit more. Now send that sound out on the mat again and really imagine taking a huge breath. And um, I want you to think about how far you can project a, a, a nice open sound, okay? But with your breath. <sighs> Add a support and a, and a sense of projection on to the fact that you are no longer going to occur. Yeah, right? Good, 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 good. Because you're musical. I mean, this is not hard. What we're trying to fix, you could do this. You just have to yeah. hear it, focus on it, and fix it. You know? And if, if, if there are coaches or somebody who can just go, uh, no, you, you're going to fix it very quickly. And then add that really beautiful projection. Okay, try one more time. Now, it may partly be, let's get to the third phrase, it may be partly that this is the way you have controlled, you know, felt that you are in control. So let's just address that, okay? Um, let's go to the next phrase. Madun orida. Madun orida. Okay, better, better than what you first did, but it can be better. Because okay. immediately when you had the O vowel, you went back. Ah, uh, so think, think that mat, mat position, M-E-H position. Okay, so we have to change the vowel. We have to change, just to go back to mat. May or may. Try may. I, mean, I just want to hear what may sounds like. Okay. Okay, so but not behind here. More open. Meh, meh. You know what? Meh's the best. Meh's the best. Meh, meh is your opening vowel. M E H. No, you managed to go back. You managed to go back. Really tricky. Okay. Do you hear it? Yeah. Okay. So stop. So you're articulating the mask. Just keep it on the eh vowel. So let's just go. Meh. And keep really focus on keeping, not letting it go happen again. Okay. Meh. Meh. Okay, good, good, good. But even now, open it up. Okay. Meh. Have courage. Meh. Might not work, but that's okay. We're friends. <laughs> We're all friends here. Meh. Okay, good, good, good. That was open, but you still had the tongue, and you know, you still had the uh, Okay, but it was open, and you had, and it had nice energy. One more time, tongue out, uh, and energy. Okay, okay, good. Now, the lifting palate piece um, is almost like a ma, try ma, 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 I think of Luciano, ma. 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 No. Ma. Ma. That's better. That's. Ma. Oh my God, that's beautiful. That's good. <laughs> Can you try that? Ma. Good. Did you hear it tighten on the top? Yeah. Don't let it do that. But that was right. That was good. Ma. got way more voice in there than you're sharing with us. You're keeping it all to yourself. And we don't like that. We want to hear you and we want you to share your instrument with us in an unencumbered, free, beautiful way. Okay? So these two things, you, you're, you can do this. You can do this quickly. Fat, thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful job. Beautiful, beautiful job. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Thank you. All right. Okay, Amanda. I have to warm up. I have to warm up.
afternoon. I am Amanda Guidi, and with Gerta Weimer today, I will be singing the third of the Hermit songs composed by Samuel Barber. Um, all of the Hermit songs are uh, texts written by Irish nuns between the 8th and 13th centuries. Um, this text in particular dates back to the 8th century and is attributed to St. Ida, the patron saint of Kilidi, and what she is known for her sternness, her devoutness, and her visions. So in her lifetime, she prayed to the Lord for this experience. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Um, can I get a straw? I, can I, is there another straw backstage? Can we find one? I know, but I used it. I need a clean straw. So, sorry. Um, so I, I, you're, uh, it's a beautiful voice, and, um, and you're doing some beautiful things with this piece. I want to somehow get you to sing in a less open place, because... It's so, you have so much yawn in your sound, which I assume it's something that you've, you've picked up along the way. And I think you'll, you'll be able to do so much more. You'll have much more control and a lot more options for how to sing and how to express the words if you can, if you can kind of slim that down just a little bit. And the straw is the best, quickest way to do that. So we'll get that. But in the meantime, <clears throat> let's just try uh, from the beginning. Just singing a 
and yay. Excellent. Okay, so nice and yay, yay. Um, try um, nang, nang, nang. Oh, we have one. So, so, what happened? What happened? It's okay. All right, so try the whole thing, try the whole thing singing through the straw. Right, so just less, less quality, less vibrato, just, just, find, just feel how it feels to sing. So that this, this um, forces you to, to, uh, to focus everything into a smaller space, obviously. And the same as, um, which I use this a lot when I'm warming up in the top. So it, it, you can do so much more if you are not in the way by trying to make a big sound. And this is especially dangerous for, you know, for our higher register. Um, but you're in the middle voice trying to make a really big sound. So we want to kind of get it a little smaller. So just try that. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Keep going. Yeah. Just try that. Nice. Yeah. So try singing it and see if you can sort of remember. Just remember that smaller place. Try that. That's a way big. No, it's much smaller. It's much smaller. So it says it's forte, but we're going to ignore that for the moment. Okay. Just, just in fact, let's do this as if we are singing a recitative. Easy, easy. I will take nothing from my Lord, said she. Okay, you know what? That's enough. You shouldn't be singing much bigger than that. That's plenty. And it sounds much, it sounds natural and beautiful. So you could open up the top a little more, but the middle, no. I wouldn't do anything else with the middle. That was perfect. Try that. I will. You can open that up a little, but then nothing from my Lord. Oh, just easy. A little bit easier. I will take nothing from my Lord, said she. So even the first two pitches, much, still, it's too, you're using too much power. I will. I will. I will. So make it declamatory, but not pushed. I will take nothing Good. from my Lord, said she. Okay. want to sing full out you always want to hold something for the future <laughs> you know you want to hold something back for when you're 40 uh, you know what they used to call it not singing on your principal which was lost on me because I didn't know anything about money so uh, I'm just just remember you want to still be singing when you're 40 um, and we're trying to kill continue to sound like you so no pushing I, you know so Try, try for your heaven. Just do one more time. Smaller, smaller. A little bit smaller. Instead of you're doing a lot of space for some reason. You don't need to. You don't need to. It's, it makes us nervous because we think, is that going? Is she going to get through this? No, you have a beautiful. You have a big, beautiful voice. You don't need to kind of op do any over opening or over uh, or using too much air. Good, beautiful. That's enough. That's plenty. Go on. So, a little more open. Nah, 
because you're you're kind of going into this quite deep place. Mm -hmm. it's, I just I feel like it can be a more natural. Okay. That I may notice him. It's it's already beautiful. Just try that. That I may notice him. That I may notice him. Gorgeous, gorgeous, go on. So that Christ can come to her. So why is Cain so big? Right. Just, you just say Christ came down to her. To her. So, so that Christ came down to her in the form of a baby. So try it. Try it. <clears throat> Use your straw. Try it. Um, I'm simply uh, trying to help you get back to something that's slightly more natural, you know, because it's, it's, it, it, it's, you're going to be limited in what you can sing in the way you're trying to do it, because it's so much, it's got so much pressure and so much space. Does that make sense? You do. Okay, you get it. Okay, let's go on. This is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I haven't heard this in a long time. It's gorgeous. Ye infant Jesus. And easy, just ride it, ride it. Ride over this phrase. So try, try one more time. Try. Let's get away from beauty. Let's get away from beauty and go to core. What's the core of this? That is so beautiful. The only one you got, what that went out was G. Nang, 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 nang. It's just a little bit smaller. Jesus, infant, infant Jesus, at my breast. Nothing in this world is true, save oh, Much better, much, much better. So you can still go 30% smaller. So, and because then you can say the words more clearly. Right now, it's like a column of sound moving from pitch to pitch. And I want to, I want to hear more expression, more sort of what's, what are these words you're singing? What do they mean? Right? So, and you're, you're, this, this in breast uh, save, where is that? This carrying over into save only works if you make it musical as opposed to sort of, I'm going to carry over and I'm going to breathe after the word save. So it would be, nothing in this world is true save. True save. Oh. You know what, I have, to, I have to know why you're doing that, as opposed to just doing it. Can you do, just try that for me? Nothing. Nothing in this world is true save. Right now, because even true, it's, a, it's just still a little bit too much, too yawn, too much yawn in your sound, okay? Let's go on. Uh, you, I nurse, are not a churl. You want to go from by my heart every night to sort of practice that? Yeah. Okay. By my heart. By has a lot of air. By heart, by my Okay. By my
one is this kind of kindness. I'm not. You need to think hard about it. Just try exaggerating the text here from you. And so I want to come back to the center a little bit. And by the way, again, this is lifelong. You're going to constantly be going, oops, I went too far that way. Oops, I went too far that way. And constantly making adjustments. Um, and the people who don't are really lucky. <laughs> they, they just sing well from day one and, and, and keep on that track. Um, can we just hear uh, 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 this last Give Everlasting Good from there? This is bottom of 131. Don't worry for your future. <laughs> it's really nice. Beautiful. Okay. So, so everything much smaller. Now, and if I had time, we would sort of work out this uh, uber strength thing you're doing here. Uh, and again, you know, try singing. I would sing like laying on the ground. Try just seeing what happens if you're not, if you're not really putting everything into it and find that more natural place. Beautiful. Thank you. Garrett, a beautiful playing. Beautiful. Thank you. Yay. So, you know, one of the things, um, famous actress Julianne Moore came to a rehearsal I had last week and sat next to me because she's playing Roxanne Koss in the film Bel Canto. And she said, I don't know anything, but she and her husband both said to me at the end of rehearsal, they could not believe how different, completely different every voice was and what a shocking experience that was because obviously we're not amplified. So hearing the live human voice in this concert setting as opposed to, she, they said, of course, on camera, in television, it, everything gets equalized. And so you don't hear that. And also, uh, you don't hear the beauty in a hall. So this masterclass setting is so so gratifying for me also because you're, I'm experiencing every single human being with such extraordinary talent already at a high level. And isn't that fun though, that you get to hear these different singers? I just, I love it, it's great. So anyway, I'm open to questions. If anybody has any questions, we have a couple minutes. We have a little bit of time. Anybody wanna know anything? You know, we've, we've been through this before. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, 
God, it's so hard. <laughs> I, you know, I hear in your that that anxiety in your voice of sort of trying to figure it out. And uh, <laughs> the sad things, you know, the sad thing is, is I've had singers come to me who already have fabulous careers, and they're saying the same thing. I, you know, I don't feel like I have a foundation. I don't feel like I really know what I'm doing. I'm a fraud. You know, um, so so the foundation is are the basics. So it's what is resonance, what is breath support, how do you take in a great breath, um, what's your goal? You know, it's sort of also trying to figure out in any given piece that, that you're trying to juggle both the technical things that you're absorbing and the musical things and language and movement. And it takes years because those are a lot of different elements to try and absorb and bring back. Now, I just had a, a, a quite successful young singer come and she just was confused about the top. Is it, you know, what's it supposed to be? So uh, I didn't really know, feel confident in my, the choices I was making on stage until my mid 30s. So, you know, be easy on yourself. It is a process that is a huge challenge. And, um, and, and your body takes a long time to get with the program. <laughs> uh, and then, and then you're, you know, I was thinking I was singing phenomenally well on stage and somebody came back and said, Are you, were you marking tonight? So it's, you know, you just, it's very frustrating for a long time. Uh, and then you have about five minutes where it's fantastic and then you start to decline. So, <laughs> so it, it, you know, welcome to our world. <laughs> Um, so, but those, the, those foundation, the foundation pieces are really crucial. I mean, you, you, you have to have that so you at least feel. But the hardest thing, which is how to sing a pitch in a given piece, you're always going to wrestle with that because an F sharp for me changes based on the context, on the language, on whether it's a song recital or an opera. Sometimes it's full. And, and I'm really trying to open it up and give it as much as I can. And sometimes I'm trying to sing in a little tiny little place and singing a whole thing in a tiny place because of the tessitura. It might be a very high tessitura and then I have to just shut it down. So um, this is the, the hardest thing to sort out. Anything else? Is there someone in your life that inspired you to sing? Yeah, yeah, where is she? Yeah. Oh, there's my mother right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he asked. Uh, uh, he he asked if there was someone in my life who inspired me to sing. You know, I my running joke is that I'm an indentured servant. So you know, my parents were both singing, but especially my mother. You know, and we learned if she learned something, we learned it. You know, when we were in, when I was ten or eleven years old, we were learning all her music with her. So, uh, and, and then she created a monster, <laughs> right? Who knew? So, but that you have the drive, you have the work ethic, you have to be super resilient. And now in your generation, you have to be very creative. You can't just follow, uh, the template is a bit broken. So the template that I uh, had, which was that you start auditioning, you win, you know, hopefully a competition and you get picked up by an agent and then you start singing opera. It's very frayed right now. And so a lot of singers are finding their way by creating their own performances and by um, singing other genre and, and by really trying to reinvent uh, the art form. So, and, and I have great hope because people are doing it extremely well. I, I wanna go to the things they produce. Um, I think we're definitely gonna get there. We're not going anywhere. It's just, it's just evolving. Anything else? Yes. Um, earlier on, you said that um, you did Pilates. I was just curious how much physical um, like exercise you incorporate into your um, practice, both while you were in the hospital and for today. So, uh, you know, I didn't do uh, enough when I was a young singer. And, uh, and once I discovered Pilates, I've been doing it for about, I don't know, 20 years now, 15 years now, which has given me the core strength. Um, it's, it's been important. Most, a lot of singers do yoga. I think I may have mentioned Jonas Kaufmann, the famous tenor, 
yoga every day on a performance day. You know, I'm, I feel stronger, I have better posture, and I feel much more connected this way if I do, I always do something on performance day. Because uh, otherwise I'm just, I'm, I'm creaky. I just don't feel the connection. Uh, so it's, it's very helpful, but for you all, because I'm not singing much opera at this point, you need it so that you can act believably, so that you c your body is showing the audience. I, you know, I had a painful experience mid-early career when I was singing Susanna, when my publicist um, said, God, Renee, you really, you know, you can't act. And I was on stage. Tears were running down my face. I was so involved in the scene and in what I was doing. Like I knew, I just, I was just hurt by that comment. But I realized shortly after is that I wasn't showing the audience. You know, in an opera house, there's no camera. I mean, now there is with HD, but at that time there was no camera in your face. You, if you're not, if you're standing there like a lump and feeling everything very deeply, that doesn't. That, that doesn't transfer, you know, to the 50th row. Um, so, you know, the more physical you are and the more in your body, um, the more you can be expressive as a musician and as an artist. Anything else? Yes. Before you go on stage for a performance, do you have a particular mental process or something that gets you in that mindset? So performance readiness, so uh, it's, it's quite individual. For me, it's about um, really uh, paying attention and focusing on the fact that I have a performance. If it catches you by surprise, because you think, oh, I got that, I got that. I've done this before. Uh, it's no problem, I'm busy, but that's fine. You will sometimes be unpleasantly surprised. <laughs> by the panic that hits you, unfortunately, in the moment. And my worst moment in my career was on this stage, right here, and it was the Met competition. Do they still have the regionals here? So I literally, my voice started to shake. <laughs> and halfway through, I, I, want, I just said to my pianist, I said, if I just went under the piano and walked out, would it be okay? So it was, and once you have that stage fright, it's a long road back. So preparation, over, be overprepared, not the day before, but you know, weeks before ideally, and, and be mentally prepared just with the focus. And then you have to tell yourself good things like, I can do this. I can only do as well as I can do in that moment, and that's enough. And even if I'm nervous, and even if I have the jitters, I can still sing. So, you I mean, you it's a battle, it's a bit of a battle, so... Uh, uh, and then you get to a place, and some people, some of my colleagues love adrenaline. And I look at them like they have three heads, because I'm not a fan of adrenaline. Uh, but then I, but now I, I love performing. It's a joy, it's an absolute joy. I think of it as sharing with the audience um, and communicating with the audience. I sort of try really hard to keep the energy going this way as opposed to this way. Because when it comes this way for me, it's usually judgmental. I imagine that you know, people are taking notes and going, uh, eh. <laughs> so, so it's, you know, a lot of people struggle. Yes? Having an active career? The balance, you know, especially because I was a mom. I still am a mom. <laughs> um, it's just that they're taller and more mature than I am now. Uh, so it's helpful. Uh, but it was, it was really, I, 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 I can't say I was ever happy with the balance. It was usually too much work, um, taking on a lot, feeling very pressured. Uh, and I'm still doing that now in, in, with different kinds of work. Um, but otherwise, I love it. I mean, I travel. People can't believe how much I travel. And in fact, this whole year, I've had a performance almost every three days in some other city. And, um, but I, you know, we're used to it. It's, it's our lifestyle. Uh, for those of us who are privileged enough to be able to sing for a profession. How many of you want to sing professionally? Yes, good, 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 excellent. 
it is phenomenal. It really is great. And I get to choose and pick a lot of repertoire and create my own rapport with the audience when I'm singing a concert. And it is a, it's, it's such a joy. Highly recommend it. <laughs> okay, anything else? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, first of all, I tried to be a great bel canto singer when I was a student, which was kind of a joke, because I didn't have any high notes. Uh, but had I not tried and continued to work on it and want it and be determined, my technique would have been narrower and it wouldn't have given me as many possibilities. So I urge you all to push yourselves. Um, and, you know, don't, in my generation, people didn't sing in Czech and Russian. And now, you know, now the younger, my younger colleagues read it. And they use the Cyrillic alphabet. We were, you know, battling transliter you know, transliterations. So um, there are no barriers. You're all young. You're in your peak learning period in terms of the brain. I'm doing a lot of work on music in the brain right now. Uh, in Washington, and uh, this is the time to push yourselves. You must. That said, you don't want to screw up your technique by, uh, by uh, you know, sometimes people put the cart before the horse. Uh, you know, before you have to learn to sing in your middle voice before you can really get the extreme range in, in any kind of shape. Um, so, so that's one caveat to that. Thank you, yes. Well, I'm glad you asked that. So in this current political climate, what's the uh, most important role? Um, we uh, at the Kennedy Center picked uh, nine fellows last year who are all doing community service and all doing very creative artistic work in their cities around the country. And that is where we all can make a difference now and always, frankly. We should all be doing this. We should all be really thinking about others and thinking about how to how to you know, make our cities better, our societies better. And uh, my generation was very me-oriented, and we were sort of famous for that, you know, the me generation. You guys, I think, are going to make a difference. You know, I, I mean, I, my own children and their friends um, are active. They're, they're you know, genuinely active, and I think it's going to be much more now. But for musicians, uh, I, I'm sort of pushing the artistic uh, relevance piece with health, health and well-being. That's the one way I'm doing it right now. But you have to think creatively about how can I make people want to hear what we do? Is it, you know, is it going to be a, for unusual presentation? Is it going to be mixing classic repertoire with modern pieces? Is it going to be making it theatrical or using media or, or using movement? So, I mean, uh, if, if I could design a program, there would be these elements in it because I, s I think that, that we need to do that. Because right now there's no market for what you just heard today. There is no market for song recital. So you have to create it by being really think by thinking out of the box. So, um, and I, you know, I'm working on it too in my way because I love song. I absolutely love it. I mean, how many of you enjoy attending recitals? So, and if, if I think for people who need a way in, it's a foreign language, you know, a lot of the music is from the 19th century. Um, you're doing a lot of 20th century music, which is great, and, and 21st century music. So I think you almost have to kind of think, how can we, how do we find an audience for this thing that we love? So you're not just singing for other singers. Okay, thank you for asking that. Oh, yep, okay. So if you want to be an opera singer, you must study abroad. You know, even for a summer, even for a language course, you know, pick what, re you know, what language you think is going to be your repertoire. But, you know, I had a Fulbright grant and studied in Germany, and I didn't know I was going to sing Strauss. Uh, so that was 
luck, you know, destiny, I don't know. Uh, but, but studying abroad is the best way to do it. And if you can't, you can do an immersion course wherever you are, pretty much. They'll offer, even in the summer, take a week, take two weeks. But immersion with a native speaker is really the way to go. You know, I loved my French high school teacher, but she was really not a native speaker. So for a singer, you have to have that in your ear. But it's really important. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I, I sing a lot of challenging German music. You know, I just toured with the Emerson Quartet, singing Berg, Velich, um, and we also recorded, uh, we, we've done Schoenberg together, and, and I've sing, of course, a lot of Strauss. And I would not feel confident in this repertoire if I didn't fluently speak German. Mr. Oz. <laughs>